Hey guys, Jordan here. In this video, I'm gonna talk about ISO 50 versus ISO 100. So let's get into it. All right, so recently I've been doing a lot of testing on our newer cameras, specifically the a7 IV, and just testing the performance of the sensor at different um, ISO uh, settings. Now, previously I was like, you know what? There's probably not much of a difference between the, the ISO 100 and ISO 50. I think I tested a little bit on some of the previous cameras and I didn't really notice too, too big of a difference. But uh, with these newer cameras, you know, I did side-by-side -side comparison, zoomed in. Now these are in extreme conditions. Like typically, you know, you're not gonna see much of a difference unless you're a pixel peeper and really uh, looking at noise levels when you have to go deep into the shadows, right? So say your exposure, you're shooting a real estate photography shoot and your camera exposes for a window so the interior is completely dark. Can you salvage that information in the post-production process? I think that really, uh, that type of scenario is where ISO really plays a key factor because if you have a high ISO setting, when you start to boost those shadows and exposure, you're gonna get a whole heck of a lot of grain in your shadows. So I, I've been very impressed with the performance at ISO 50 over ISO 100. Uh, I, I always thought it was kind of a, a gimmick, you know, like, uh, it's like, I figure like ISO 100 is good enough. How much better can ISO 50 be? But there's definitely a noticeable difference when you uh, boost your um, ISO uh, or you boost your shadows and your exposure digging deep into the uh, shadows. And I, and in my mind, it goes back like, I always thought that Canon, well, um, subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna be doing a comparison between ISO on uh, Sony, uh, Canon, and Nikon, uh, the Z6, the EOS R, and I'll probably do the a7 III because that one's uh, more in the same price range and uh, as those other cameras. I don't, uh, just to see the difference. But back in the day when I was shooting the, the Canon 5D Mark III and I had to go into the shadows, man, it was, it was bad news bears. And then when I went to the a7R, man, I was blown away by how much information there is in there, even though like at the zero exposure unedited, it looks black, right? How much information is in there? Tons um, in these newer uh, cameras, so. Anyways, those are my thoughts. Um, there are some things to consider, right? If you're reducing your ISO setting from 100 to 50, your shutter speed, assuming all other camera settings are the, are the same, your shutter speed is gonna be slower. It's just like, you know, uh, increasing your aperture, right? So if you, you're normally shooting at a F7.1 and then you go to F13, all other settings stay the same, your shutter speed is gonna be um, longer, assuming you have that fixed ISO, right? And not a variable ISO. Uh, anyways, those are my thoughts on it. Um, if you guys wanna see more uh, expansion videos on ISO settings for cameras, let me know in the description below. More than happy to make those. I do a lot of testing, um, but I'm not sure what the interest level is to, f to actually show um, the results, so. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. If you got value out of it, hit the like button and consider subscribing as we consistently put out real estate photography content just like this. And as always, thanks for watching. We will see you guys on the next one.